the operating concept of the Camflex 2 valve is identical to the Camflex studied earlier. The Camflex valves use an eccentrically rotating spherical plug. The self-aligning plug rotates eccentrically into the seat for tight shutoff. The spherical plug rotates through a 50 degree arc. The center of the plug seating surface is offset from the shaft axis. When rotated through a 50 degree arc, the plug moves down and forward to contact solidly against the seat ring. A positive seal between plug and seat is achieved by the elastic deformation of the plug arms. As the plug seats, the arms flex such that additional actuator thrust only forces the plug deeper and into tighter contact with the seat. This exploded view shows the valve parts. The parts are the valve body, seat ring, seat ring retainer. The seat ring retainer screws in the valve body to a specific minimum torque holding the seat ring in place. And this exploded view shows the valve internal parts that fit on the shaft. They are, from left to right, the packing follower, packing, packing box ring, retaining ring, spacer tube, upper guide bushing, plug, and lower guide bushing. A safety pin screws into the bonnet to hold the packing box ring in place. This ring prevents the shaft from being pushed out when the top brackets are removed while the valve is still pressurized. The Camflex actuator is a variation of the basic spring-opposed diaphragm type. The Camflex uses a rolling diaphragm which permits a long actuator stroke. The main actuator parts are, from left to right, the spring barrel, piston, diaphragm, and diaphragm case. Inside the spring barrel under the piston is the actuator spring. The actuator stem is connected to a lever on the valve shaft. On an air to close valve, as the air pressure increases, the actuator stem extends and rotates the plug into the seat. The positioner used with this valve will be included in module 2.4. In this module, the positioner has been removed. Now work exercise number one in your workbook. The Camflex 2 valve can be either air to open or air to close and is determined by the desired air failure action. We're going to change the action of the valve from air close to air open. Remove the front and rear covers by removing the cover screws. Unsnap the spring barrel boss cover and bottom cover. Apply sufficient air pressure to the actuator to move the lever to an intermediate position and remove the clevis pin clips and clevis pin. Release the air pressure and disconnect the tubing. Position the lever so it does not contact the hand wheel power screw assembly. Remove the true arc ring and washer from the hand wheel power screw assembly. Unscrew and remove the hand wheel power screw assembly from the yoke. Remove the hand wheel thread plug. If the actuator is equipped with the optional limit stop in place of the hand wheel thread plug, it must be removed. Remove the spring barrel by removing the cap screws and lock washers that hold it in place. Place the spring barrel on the opposite side of the yoke. 
Secure it with the cap screws and lock washers and tighten firmly. Screw the handwheel power screw assembly into the yoke on the side opposite the spring barrel. The handwheel action is always the same as the air action and opposes the actuator spring. Replace the handwheel washer and true arc ring and back off the hand wheel so it will not interfere with the operation of the lever. Replace the hand wheel thread plug. If the valve is equipped with the optional limit stop instead of the thread plug, it must now be installed. Back off the stop so it will not interfere with operation of the lever at this time. Since this valve is air to open, the clevis must be removed to make the actuator stem adjustment. Apply sufficient air to extend the stem enough to remove the clevis and lock nut. Relieve the air pressure to the actuator. Insert the clevis pin in the lever and manually push the lever so the valve is in the closed position. Temporarily replace the front cover and check the location of the clevis pin in relation to the closed position indicator mark on the front cover. The relationship must be as shown. If it is not, the yoke must be separated from the body and the lever repositioned on the shaft. Failure to comply could result in the valve short stroking or over stroking and could damage the valve. Replace the clevis and lock nut. With no air pressure on the actuator, scribe a line on the clevis in line with the inside of the yoke. Gradually apply seven pounds of air pressure to the actuator. The clevis should move about one quarter of an inch. With the lever and valve plug in the fully closed position, the holes in the clevis and lever should be in line. If the holes do not line up, move the lever to the open position. Screw the clevis in or out on the actuator stem until the holes in the clevis and lever are aligned with the lever and plug in the fully closed position. Insert the clevis pin so the indicator dot will be visible through the front cover and secure it with the clevis pin clips. Gradually apply sufficient air pressure to extend the clevis lock nut to an accessible position and tighten firmly. Some models have an adjustable indicator that is held in place on the lever with two screws. If used, put it in place and adjust the indicator to the indicator marks on the front cover. Replace the front and rear covers and secure in place with the cover screws. Snap the spring barrel boss cover and bottom cover in place. Prior to placing the valve in service, Operate the valve actuator through at least one complete cycle to ensure proper functioning. If desired, set the hand wheel or optional limit stop to the desired position. Now work exercise number two in your workbook.